All right, guys, it's that time of the month again where I talk to you about all the upcoming banners and events that are going to be slamming into the NA version of FGO in the next month, that being the month of February. And funny enough, I think I actually forgot to do this for the month of January because the beginning of the year is just so jam packed full of like different banners, especially when you consider that I cover both versions of the game. So, yeah, I'm kind of sorry about that if anybody was like, I didn't know Little Big Tengu was coming out, but don't worry, I got you guys covered in today's video. However, before we begin, this video is actually sponsored by somebody different. It is sponsored by FateMerch.com, and if you don't know what these guys do, basically they're kind of similar to a lot of the other services where they will send you a box of goodies every single month if you sign up for their little subscription, except this one, believe it or not, is all Fate related, which is why I think it's super sick because over here in the West, it can be like really hard to get your hands on a lot of merch over from Japan and especially Fate where they don't actually like import a lot of this stuff. So it can be really nice to just be like, oh yeah, I just got myself like a box every single month. That's going to be bringing me just a ton of really cool Fate merch. And they have different boxes you can actually go ahead and get for yourself. So if you just want like a couple of little things every single month, you can get one of the smaller boxes. Or if you want like a lot of merch every single month, you can get one of the bigger boxes. And whichever one you decide to get, you actually get 10% off if you use my code that'll flash right up here on the screen right now. And I'll also include it in the description down below. I'll also have a link to their website if you wanna go check out some of the other stuff that they got over there. But yeah, I just think it's a really cool service because Especially for me, there's not a lot of fate stuff that I can really buy around me, right? It's not a super common thing that you're just like finding in Walmart or something. So I always think this is really cool. Plus, who doesn't like just getting a box of stuff every month and being like, dude, look at this. It's sick and it's always going to have some based fate merch in it. But with all that being said, let's move back into our regularly scheduled programming. So the next event we're going to be looking at coming either like really late in January or at the beginning of February, again, kind of depending on how they time some of these things as we can kind of see on the JP version of the game we're looking at kind of like a dead week and a half <laughs> until they drop Lost Belt 7 but assuming they're just going to drop this at a normal time we should be getting the next Holy Grail front which realistically shouldn't be that hard for most masters because Keep in mind, you can beat these with level one servants just by kind of exploiting the AI a little bit, maneuvering around their servants, and then just punching the master in the face a couple of times. Like, this should essentially be free grails for people. Like, it really shouldn't be all that difficult unless you're like me and you just want to take your servants and go to battle and really sweat it out against these other teams and make it a little bit more difficult than it actually has to be. Even though it's really not all that difficult, I find these to be really fun, but yeah, even if you're a newer player and you're like, oh, my box isn't all that good, bro, go get your like level one Caligula and your level one Arash and go put in some work, you know, like you can definitely take it out. I think the most important thing that people are going to be looking forward to with this Holy Grail front is that Romulus actually does come back. Now, Romulus is very solid. He is an AoE Buster Lancer who has the ability to turn everybody into Romans, right? That's kind of like the niche that he's got going on. He does have a 30% battery, which means that if you're kind of planning for the Koya and Skaya meta, he's not going to be like as good as some of the other servants that have a natty 50% battery. But if you're going to use him for farming and if he's like one of your favorite servants in the game and you're going to go like absolutely hard for NP2 or NP3, then he can get the job done, right? 30% battery servants are fine. You can make do with them. It's just Tamamo really likes to be paired with those 50% battery servants. But yeah, he's really solid. And people are probably going to remember a fun little interaction because Boudicca is also going to be getting a uh, upgrade over here. So people will like go look at Boudicca's kit again and be like, wait a minute, this guy makes everybody Romans. She gives everybody damage mod against Romans. You could do some funny stuff with that, right? So you know, also make sure that you get these done. These should basically be free, by the way, because everybody should have Boudicca and Caligula. Make sure you actually get these rank ups done, because even if you're never going to use Caligula, remember that every 10 rank ups and every 10 interludes that you do, you get 10 Saint Quartz, and you're going to want everything that you could possibly get for, you know, some of these other insane banners that are going to be coming out. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be it with this one. Free Grails, you know, if you're going to be using, like for me, I'm going to be using those for Morgan, but you might be using those for Koya and Skaya, Oberon, whoever you're looking forward to. And then Romulus does come back. Do I advise that you summon for Romulus? I wouldn't advise summoning for him. I think there are better servants that are going to be coming out, you know, pretty much 
everything in regards to Lost Belt 6 and the anniversary is just going to be really insane. But if you really do like Romulus, he's one of your favorite servants and you just think he's super chatty, then by all means, go ahead and go for him. Uh, moving on after that, we should get the Valentine's, uh, I think this is our 2023 event, right? Yeah, because we're in 2023, sorry, I spaced out for a second there, because this says 2021, but I was like, no, that doesn't sound right, you know, I'm reading one thing, and I'm thinking about the other thing, and it threw me off for a second, but yeah, anyway, we're going to be getting our Valentine event with Karen, right? Now, this should actually overlap with the Grail front thing, because as you can see, this goes on until the 7th, like, well, it went on to the 17th and JP, but this started on the 10th, so whenever the Grail front starch just kind of envision that maybe like seven days a week after which is kind of what lasangle is doing right they kind of try to drop something every week on both versions of the game unless you know it was this last week on jp not going to talk about it but it does line up with their schedule and so we should see this like a week after grail front drops and this event, in my opinion, I mean, I always love Valentine events, but that's because I'm a little bit of a monster and I'm going to teach you guys a little tactic and you can use this if you want it, but the Valentine CEs that you get are all max leveled. So they're really good for CE bombs. And keep in mind, aside from, I believe it's just matches that you can't get back. You can get them back every single year. Like you can keep doing the, the Valentine's things and you can keep refunding for their Valentine CEs, right? So functionally you can just get in well not infinite but every year you can get a whole heap and helping of max limit broken max leveled ce's that are super good for ce bombs and like leveling up other ce's and stuff like that. like you can just directly throw them into other ce's and just get a whole bunch of experience right it's so good for that but then again that's if you're like not as sentimental like if you're you know you're kind of like me and you're like well i like got to watch the scene and i got to hear their dialogue and i got to hear them speak and everything but Anyway, moving on, <laughs> unless you're like me, uh, <laughs> then maybe it's not as big of a deal, but still keep in mind, you get some really good rewards from this one. Um, if you're not a huge fan of point ladders, I'm sorry, this is a three mil point ladder, so it's a little beefy, but beefy ladders mean you get beefy rewards. So it's going to be very, very nice uh, as long as you kind of just go in there and farm it. But obviously I think the thing that people are really going to care about is that Karen comes into the game. So Karen is an AoE quick ruler. I found that she can be pretty effective at being a quick farming servant if you still need that. Unfortunately, I think we're kind of in a position with quick, even on the JP version of the game, that it's just a little behind the other two metas, right? Like Buster, I think is still the best right now, as long as you, like if we're looking at all of them at their full power, it's like Buster's definitely probably the best right now because they just have the insane ability to ignore whatever's in the node, right? They don't care like how it's set up or whatever because they're just going to push through it with raw damage and just raw fat batteries. Whereas, you know, arts can kind of do the same thing, but it's a little bit more specific, right? Like on some of those 90 plus plus nodes, you got to have like specific guys or like really specific comps to go ahead and clear it. But they're still really solid because even in like normal nodes, they're just looping like an absolute maniac and they've got really strong servants to back them up. It's just that like quick, well, Scotty and Ruler Scotty are really good. And I think Ruler Scotty is better than a lot of people give them credit for. It was like a buff for quick farming because of the extra quick that she does give and the fact that she gives attack instead of the defense down. So you carry that damage through every single node. It's like, unfortunately, it's not enough to like compete with how good Castoria is and how insane just Buster as a looping mechanism is with Koyanskaya and Oberon, right? It's just so insane. So. Karen is very, very strong, but if you're going after her just because you're like, I need a quick looper, I don't know if I would advise going after her for that specific reason. I might suggest if you're going to go for like a quick looper, maybe wait for like Okita Saber Alter or Okita Alter Saber, however you want to say it. I would maybe would advise waiting for that. But again, I understand a lot of people are probably just going to go for Karen anyway, because it's Karen. She's adorable. Like who doesn't like Karen? She's super cute. So I can understand a lot of people going for her for that reason. Also keep in mind, we're going to get the uh, rerun for Say's banner as well, because you know she was the last year Valentine servant, so they're gonna bring her back, so you can try to summon for her as well. Again, similar thing that like, if you need yourself like a strong AOE quick servant, and I do think Say is strong, especially because she's got like that triple damage mod, you know, she's got 
free quest farming on lockdown because of the anti shadow servant special damage mod i don't think she's quite worth going for even though personally myself i'm very tempted to go for say uh, because i got absolutely blasted by her last year like wasn't planning on summoning for her read the event was like you know what say is super cute she's super adorable they bait me every time every time i decide to read an event i get baited into summoning right it's 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 super consistent so you know, I got absolutely blasted. I'm very tempted to try to summon on this, uh, but I'm, you know, probably gonna hold strong for uh, Morgan, you know, trying to hold out for when she comes out. But another reason people might actually summon, which is ironic, because I just made the video being like, don't summon on the CE banner, is the comma CE, right? This comma CE made people go absolutely ballistic because not only is comma just normally hot, but the CE is an absolute banger, certified like hood classic with this CE, right? Absolutely insane. And so I can imagine a lot of people are like, well, I kind of want say, but if I could get this CE, you know, that'd be pretty banging. And it's not even like it's a bad CE either, right? Even if you get in like max limit break it, quick buff, NP damage plus NP gain, quick servants love, all of that, right? You're getting big damage and you're also getting like a nice NP gain buff to help them loop a little bit easier. And if you do max limit break it and you want to be, again, an absolute monster using your Valentine CEs, you can bring it to like level 100 and, you know, get the extra 2000 attack. That's if you want to go ahead and do that. I know some people are going to be like, it's not the meta CE so to actually go ahead and choose, but, you know, I try to like max limit break and max level every single gill CE that I get. So, you know what? Sometimes you just got to do stuff because you're loyal to your favorite servants, right? Sometimes I got to level up all my gills. Gil CEs, even if it's not the most effective thing to do, it's not the most meta thing to do. He's just my boy, all right. And so, if someone wants to level up this comma CE, it's at least pretty good, right? You have a, you know, at least kind of a good reason for also doing it. Alongside, it's just it's comma. She's hot, right? Moving after that, yeah, it's the um, it's the Arthur download campaign. We're gonna get this. I don't think anybody's really going to summon on this. I think you should just kind of take this as, oh, cool, ten tickets. 10 million QP, a little bit of a login bonus. Oh, cool. Some stuff is getting uh, getting added into the Da Vinci Workshop. And really outside of that, nothing else. I mean, my man is getting a strengthening quest, but Arthur needs, he needs some help, bro. They need, they need to give this guy some help. <laughs> like when I, when I was doing the tier list and I was like, they gave this guy a 50% mana burst for three turns and he still hits like a wet mop. I was like, what are you doing wrong with this guy? <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with Arthur? Which sucks because I love Arthur so much. I think he's so cool in prototype and not to spoil anything if you've never like explored prototype or maybe you haven't um, seen uh, him appear in the FGO arcade storyline, but Arthur is so cool. Like Arthur is so sick. Like I, I absolutely love this dude. And <laughs> He just, he sucks, bro. <laughs> Why are they making him suck? Give, give my man a little bit of a break. Please give him a helping hand. Please, Lysangle. Please, give him a buff. Uh, I don't know. Make him appear randomly at the end of Lost Belt 7. That's my prediction. Someone with Excalibur is going to appear, and hopefully it's Arthur. But then again, they already had him appear in FGO Arcade, so maybe they're not going to have him do that. Anyway, this last bit is a little bit of, like, just a bit of conjecture on my point. Like, I don't think this is going to happen, but it's like... If they're really pushing through things, like, let's say we get the Holy Grail front, like, a little early, like, we get it towards the end, like, I don't know, like, a couple of days, or we get it, like, at the beginning of next week or something, like, they're kind of trying to push up the envelope a little bit. Maybe we could see this event go ahead and drop. I think it's unlikely. I think it's just going to be at the beginning of next month, right? I think that's when we could expect it. This event, like, a lot of people kind of forget about, and it's... I don't know, just not super like impressive. I don't know, from what I just remember playing through it, I was like, yeah, Amakusa gets, um, he gets his Spiritron update. Like he gets the costume, which is really cool. He gets a buff, he goes on raid up, like all this good stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, he becomes like super insane. Da Vinci also gets her buff. Jink like all these people are getting buffs and it's like super nice. Like, cause you, again, for reasons that I just mentioned, like, oh, if you do 10 rank ups, you get like 10 sand quartz or like all that good stuff. But it's just kind of like it feels like more like a filler event i don't know like not a whole lot of attention was drawn on it when it originally came out on jp and i don't feel like a lot of attention is going to be drawn towards it over on the na version when it ends up coming out and despite the fact that i'm always like yeah amakusa is really really good you know if you have him you should level him up and use him i don't think anybody's really going to go out of their way to summon for amakusa because again this is going to be coming out like late february early march and that's getting even closer to anniversary, right? Where that's going to be getting even closer to that uh, Lost Belt 6 anniversary period, which is going to be in like June, July. 
And you know, the closer you get, the more apprehensive you're gonna find that people are gonna be to summon. So if we do get this a little bit early and it does drop towards the end of February, I doubt it, but just mentioning it just in case, it's just kind of like the Amakusa and a couple other guys get some buffs, they get an animation update, they get a dress, ooh ha, you know, let's, let's move on, right? But really that's all you gotta look forward to towards the month of February. So basically free grails, a couple of buffs for some free to play servants, right? Cause you know, uh, Caligula and Boudicca are getting buffs. Then we get Valentine's. Valentine's can be very good cause you're gonna get a lot of rewards. Uh, if you're not gonna summon for Karen, you can at least also use those CEs to do some CE bombing and buff up your scopes or whatever other stuff you got maximum broken. Uh, say is gonna come back, probably should just avoid that, but I don't know, unless you really want the comma CE. And then, yeah, this is just like free stuff that you should be getting. You should not summon on this Arthur banner. Like you should avoid that like the plague. But with all that being said, let me know what you're going to be looking forward to in the month of February. Personally, I am looking forward to Valentine's for no particular reason, but I do have a level 77 Black Grail that I would like to get completed. So yeah, I might be looking forward to that just a little bit, but love to hear all that in the comments down below. And with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.